All right, so this video is called, We All Have a Monkey in Our Heads. What are you talking about, Dylan? This is a bit weird. This is a concept that I love a lot when it comes to picturing what it means to be a human being, right? We have kind of two characters in our heads and in this little story, we can kind of imagine or come up with a analogy for the different behaviors that we do because human behavior isn't quite straightforward. So let me tell you a story about that, okay? We have a character here, he's called Jimmy. The average man, he isn't like, you know, amazingly su successful, he isn't amazingly a failure either, right? He's just a normal person, right? He has normal, you know, urges and things that he wants to do in life and he wants to succeed, of course. But there's a little voice in his brain, right? And that little voice we're gonna call the monkey, right? Whenever he's deciding between waking up on time or lying in, there's a little voice in his brain that says, oh, we could lie in, it's more comfortable, it's warm here, it's just nice, it's, it's, you know, it's better, right? Come on, just lie in a little bit, right? And each time he chooses that, that monkey gets a little bit more, you know, juice, energy, right? Between homework and video games, what he probably should be doing and something that is just, you know, better, nicer to do, more fun, it's easy, right? The monkey gets a bit stronger, right? Healthy food versus junk food. Jimmy's supposed to be on a diet right now, but he could go for the junk food. He could go for the, go for the McDonald's, right? And the monkey's getting bigger and bigger, right? Each time he chooses that bad option. Gym versus Netflix. He's supposed to go to the gym, but you know what? Netflix is more fun. It's easier. It's better to do. And look at the monkey, right? Each time he chooses that bad option, the monkey levels up. The monkey gets stronger each time, right? And so the funny thing is, right, the monkey is so afraid when there's a big deadline coming, right, that the monkey will even do productive things, anything, anything else apart from that big deadline, right? The monkey part of you will, you know, vacuum the entire house or organize your entire deck of Pokemon cards in alphabetical order for no reason. He might clean up the entire kitchen for just no, just, just to avoid having to start that task. At least I'm doing something productive, right? You might even clean the whole house, right? He might even organize his physics notes from high school, even though he's at university studying business now. So these things, they're technically kind of productive, but they'd have no use for him right now especially for this deadline he's supposed to be working towards. He'll find a random toy in his attic and think, oh, you know what, I could fix that broken toy, right? He'll do these random tasks that are technically productive things to do. They feel productive, and so to him, it's justified, right? This productive procrastination for him feels justified, right? But then he realizes something, right? He's got to kind of fight against this monkey type urge that he feels in his brain and come up with something to combat this, right? This is a common thing we see in pop culture, right? This is the movie Emperor's New Groove, right? Where one of the characters has an angel and a devil on his shoulders. And it's very common. We see this a lot, right? And this angel typically represents like our good intentions, right? Our kind of high consciousness, our kind of will to do good in life. And the devil represents possibly our instincts, our urges to do the bad thing, right? And so we have these kind of voices in our head that tell us to do the good and the bad, right? That's how we see it in pop culture. It's very popular to see this kind of analogy in movies and TV shows and things like that. We see it even with Homer in The Simpsons, right? The angel and the devil on his shoulders telling him, the good and the bad thing to do, right? It's very, very typical to see this kind of thing, right? And it's very similar to what we have in this presentation, right? What the monkey loves doing is being lazy, being impulsive, and not caring too much about the consequences of things, right? The monkey just wants to do the fun and the easy thing. As long as it's fun and easy, then yeah, I love doing that says the monkey, right? But there's another part of us that values something else, 
right? It's not just the monkey that lives in our brain. There's another part that loves and values hard work, self-control, and planning for the future. Kind of the opposite kind of things, right? But the thing is, this monkey is part of us, and this other part is part of us. So is the human. And that's what I'm going to call these characters today. The monkey and the human, right? <laughs> so we have both of these characters in our brain. The human and the monkey, right? So in terms of the brain, right? I'm not a neurosurgeon here, so I'm just going to talk in very basic terms. The human part of our brain is going to be this part here, generally speaking, right? The prefrontal cortex, an area of our brain that has developed later in our kind of evolutionary history. And the animal brain is kind of near the center, right? I apologize if I don't get this 100% accurate, but this is towards the center of our brain, which historically we developed earlier in our lifetimes, more of the animal side of our brain. It's been part of us, our core kind of, you know, brain structure for much longer than the prefrontal cortex has been, right? So to get into some, some science here, the limbic system, right? That's the animal part of our brain, by the way, right? Let me just label that here, limbic system, right? And this is the prefrontal cortex, right? I'm just gonna write PFC, prefrontal cortex, right? So the limbic system, our animal side, is this. So this literally, I Googled it, Queensland Brain Institute is the resource I'm using here. The limbic system is the part of the brain involved in our behavioral and emotional responses especially when it comes to when it comes to behaviors we need for survival survival is the important word there it's more of our animal side of our brain right feeding reproduction and caring for our young and f fight or flight responses right very animalistic kind of responses our base instincts of what to do in life if we were left alone with no civilization we'd at least do these things right we'd eat we'd have an urge to reproduce we would you know have our fight or flight responses those kind of things right? Whereas the human side of our brain, right, the what the bit I labeled earlier as our prefrontal cortex, right, is described like this. One of our last places in the brain to mature, so I talked about in history, this is kind of like the bit we developed later on in evolutionary history. The prefrontal cortex is thought of as the personality center and is the cortical region that makes us uniquely human, right? That's why I call it the human side of our brain instead of the monkey side of our brain, right? It is where we process moment-to-moment -moment input from our surroundings. Compare that input to past experiences and then react to them, right? It's kind of our, like, higher level of thinking that we have in our brains to be able to, you know, solve problems, think about the future, things like this, right? And it is, as it says, what makes us uniquely human. And so to be able to understand that and interpret that, we tell ourselves the story of, this monkey and a human in our brain. It's very useful, right? So the thing I disagree with is the movies and the TV shows that label the monkey as the bad character, right? As the devil on your shoulder. I don't think this is quite correct. It's funny, it's kind of relatable, but for us, I wanna be a bit more precise than just monkey equals bad, right? And in the same vein, I don't think the human character is the angel either. I don't think that's like the, you know, the good character on our brains. I don't think that's quite the appropriate labeling either, right? It's still funny. It's still like you can, you get the, the joke when it comes along, but I want to be a bit more accurate in this lecture today because it's just, I want to help you out the most. And so you, you need to understand it better than what we have in entertainment, right? Entertainment versus education, right? This video is more of an educational video, right? It's more about who's in control, right? So in Jimmy's future version one, right, we see him prioritizing what the monkey wants to do, right? <laughs> Sorry. And the monkey wants to do the impulsive thing. So we can see here, maybe he's, you know, susceptible to drink. He's become an alcoholic. He doesn't take care of himself, really, in terms of hygiene and things like that. He doesn't plan for the future, and so he's ended up in the situation where he doesn't really have a job. He doesn't really care about his career and status and things like this. And so that's when the monkey has taken control of his life. Jimmy's future number two is when the human has taken control of his life. The opposite of the spectrum. This is when he thinks about the future 
he thinks about his plans, about his family, about who he's going to meet as his wife and his kids and things like this. And so for this, he needs money, right? So he's worked on his career and things like that. And generally, the human side of his brain is allowed to take control over the monkey side, right? So in Jimmy's future number two, the human voice in his head is a louder voice than the monkey. The monkey's always going to be there. You're never going to get rid of the monkey, right? Unless you surgically remove that part of your brain that is the center of your brain. But then you remove all the parts of your brain that, you know, allow you to survive. The urge to eat, your hunger, your reproductive kind of urges as well, right? The urge to, to breathe and things like this, right? The basic urges that we have in our bodies come from this monkey side. So it's not the bad side necessarily. It's just that we need to keep it under control, right? And the truth is, I've been Jimmy, right? So I went through my photos and found this very embarrassing photo of me. This is a picture of me in our kind of the study area of our house at the time, right? Maybe I was, I'm not sure, maybe 16, 17. And what I'm wearing right there is a swimming cap, right? When I was younger, when I was about 9, 10, 11, I used to swim, right? And so at this point in time, right, when this picture was taken, I was supposed to be studying, right? But I went through my old things apparently, and I found an old swimming cap, and I decided it would be more productive for me to try on my swimming cap and take selfies to be funny instead of studying, right? I was just messing around. This little picture here is a good representation of like the kind of attitude I had at the time. Just messing around, don't care too much about things, and just, you know, procrastinate all the time. And do what's fun and do what's easy, right? So I've been Jimmy. I've been that procrastinator. I've been that person, right? But then... I developed more of a laser focus to the things I want to achieve in life, right? So things like this, things like the body that I've achieved right now required focus, right? It required me not to procrastinate on that, to go to the gym every day and work on what I wanted to do, right? And in a similar vein, there's other things, right? I learned to control my monkey and achieve things that I wanted to do. So a 5 a.m. wake up, right? So actually, I'll be honest, this isn't quite honest. I actually wake up most days before five, right? My alarm is set for five, but most days I wake up. So today I woke up at around 4.30, right? I kind of naturally wake up a little bit before my alarm. And so it tends to be around four or even three some days, right? If I'm feeling especially perky, my body just wakes me up at three and says, you know what, it's time to wake up, get out of bed, right? <laughs> I'm at the whims of my, my physical, uh, well, my physical clock in that sense, right? So, I wake up at 5 a.m. every day. 5 a.m. already seems early, but then I wake up even earlier than that, right? And that to me, to this version of me that I talked about before, the Jimmy version of me, seems impossible. But then I just get it done. How do I do that? How do I do that when my monkey brain is telling me, oh my goodness, it'll be so much better to just go back to sleep and sleep for the rest of the day until 2 p.m., right? How do I kind of suppress that urge inside of me? That's what I'm going to tell you about today. Going to the gym every single day, right? And working on this YouTube channel, despite the fact that I only have a couple hundred subscribers, I've made 853 videos so far, right? I've put a decent amount of effort into them. I've changed them up. I've experimented with things. I've made this many videos across about a decent year of doing YouTube, right? And a bit more than that as well. If you if you count my experience at uni and me uploading kind of here and there, I've uploaded for a year productively, as in, sorry, not productively, uh, continually is what I meant to say but I've uploaded some at uni, and this many videos in just a year shows how much I kind of have given and how much I've kind of been able to prioritize that human side of my brain instead of that monkey side of my brain, right? I'm not trying to brag here, I'm just trying to show you what I've been able to do throughout this process. So I want to tell you the answer to this question, how do I control my monkey? 
right? My name is Dylan Alexander, and today I'm gonna to teach you what I learned throughout that process, and I'm gonna give you all those secrets that I learned over that entire time of like a decade or more of experience I've had in controlling this monkey character in my brain and prioritizing and allowing that human voice in my brain to be the bigger voice, right? How I went from this character to this character, right? How I controlled my monkey brain, right? So I got to a place where I'm gonna help you do the same, right? Get to a place where you will never procrastinate. You'll do the hard work and you'll stay in control, right? There'll be periods of time in your life where this will be the mood that you're in. Of course there is time for fun. Of course there's time for relaxation. Of course there's time to, to let go a little bit. But I will teach you the secrets to have these periods of time where these things are very achievable and easy to do, right? I want to teach you with our philosophy and our philosophy is to not be the sheep, not be the NPC, not be like everyone else, not to be average, right? Because, listen, if you're watching this video right now, you're probably not wanting average advice. If you're 15 minutes in, average advice is not what you want. If you want to be average or below average, you seek average advice. And we have some details in the corner here. The average person today is divorced, obese, and has less than 1K in the bank, right? You don't want to be that person. Instead, you want to be unique. You want to be a thinker. You want to think a little bit outside the box. Think about things that people aren't doing, right? Usually it's a bad sign if you're doing what everyone else is doing because you will end up like everyone else. You want to be exceptional. You want to be above average. So we want to be that thinker, right? Question the things that we take for granted and question the status quo. That's the attitude I want to bring to this video and to the channel in general. So, firstly, I'm going to go through nine steps. I know it sounds like a lot, but I will breeze through them because I wanted to make this video and not leave anything on the table, right? That's why there's so many steps, but I will quickly go through them in a way that kind of allows you to take what is valuable to you. And if it isn't quite connecting, then you can just breeze past it. And then we'll go through a Q&A and we'll answer some questions that you've submitted in the comments below and things like that. So I'll talk more about that later. You can submit questions to me, by the way. There will be a link in the description, the first link in the description and a pinned comment. But I'll talk more about that link later on. Okay, so the nine steps are as follows, right? It seems like a long list, but genuinely, they will be very interesting to look through. The first, acknowledge the monkey. The second, getting out of a rut. The third, is routine, the power routine, the fourth, environment, the fifth, dopamine control, the sixth, having a reason, the seventh, incorporating the monkey, the eighth, mental health, and the ninth, bad habits. Not in any particular order, so you can skip through these and uh, kind of, you know, go to the section that you think is best for you. But if I were you, I'd listen to all of it and just see what sticks with you and listen to that and kind of take it into and internalize that into your heart. So the first bit, acknowledging the monkey. Right? What does that mean? This is the part where I talk about the fact that the monkey isn't necessarily good or bad. Right? Our monkey is our animal side of our brain and it has urges like, you know, searching for food, being hungry, reproduction, fear, safety, comfort, saving energy in terms of the nutrients in our body and saving kind of the energy to do things. Is that necessarily good or bad? We can't answer that, can we? It's just a instinct that we have in our brains. It's neither one or it's both at the same time, right? So to think of it as good or bad is kind of incorrect in terms of the way that we think about the monkey, right? It is a natural part of us. So the monkey's not the enemy. We've got to kind of shake hands here and think, okay, this is not the way we think about this. The monkey isn't the devil on our shoulders, nor is the human the angel, right? It's just that when we are lazy, when we do, want to do the thing that's less effortful, we move from the place that's more effort to the place that's less effort, and we tend to do the monkey-like things. 
it requires a bit more effort to do the human kind of things, right? To plan for the future, to, you know, think about our future livelihood and then go and apply for that job, do the interview process and take care of our health and eat the healthy foods and go to the gym, things like this. It's more difficult to do. Whereas it's easier to be hungry. It's easy to be, you know, to not plan for the future. It's easy to be lazy. It's easy to be more comfortable right now. What we want to do is marry these things to these two things together so that, you know, we can go get a job that pays well so that we can eat one day, so that we can find a wife, so that we can you know, have that animalistic urge of companionship satisfied through the combination and the collaboration of our human and our monkey side of our brains, right? That's what the monkey side is, really. That's the, the collaboration or the, the acknowledgement of the monkey side in our brains that we can do before we start this process in, in general, right? The second step, right? I told you these would be quick. Getting out of a rut. This is the most common kind of query I get because oftentimes, even myself, I get into a rut where one thing leads to another and I've sort of allowed the monkey side of my brain to take control, even to this day, right? There'll be, you know, a couple of days in a row where I'm like, you know, feeling a bit lazy. I might not get out of bed on time. I might, you know, let's say, for example, I might start playing video games or I might start cheating on my diet, things like that. I don't, but let's say, for example, that I do. This rut can be defined as an extended period of time where the monkey has the crown, right? The monkey's in control and the human is more of a little voice in your head now, right? And the thing is, when the monkey's in control, when the monkey has the crown, that's when it's most difficult to try and do the, the human thing, the, the better thing to do right? To choose that good activity. Sorry. The hard work feels very difficult. That's when it feels the most difficult, in fact. When your monkey is in control, when you've kind of got into a couple days in a row, or a couple weeks in a row, or a couple months in a row, where the monkey is taking control, right? That's when the hard work feels the most difficult. It feels the most difficult to get out of bed on time. It feels the most difficult to go to the gym. It feels the most difficult to stay on your diet. And examples just like that, right? So the secret I have here is baby steps, right? I know that sounds silly, but pay attention here, right? This is very useful. The 10% version. If you don't like the phrase baby steps, if that sounds immature to you, use this phrase, the 10% version. This is a version that I, this is a phrase that I use with myself. Right, doing the 10% version of activity checks it off. At least, at least I did the 10% version. So, for example, in the gym, one set. Go to the gym. At least do one set. That's your minimum. Right. Instead of thinking like, oh, I've got to do this entire workout. I've got to do bench press and then dumbbell flies and then leg press and squats and you know bicep curls. Just do one set. Pick your favorite one bicep curls. For me, it's bench press, right? That's like, literally, I have this in my mind that once, I, even if I'm doing well, I'm doing fine, I go to the gym thinking, oh, I'm kind of feeling tired today. You know what? I'll at least do one set of bench press. Most times I do more than that because if you do one set of bench press, you're already at the gym. And then you feel like, you know what? I might as well do a bit more, right? So there's a minimum requirement Right? I used to call this kind of a good enough metric, right? And if you've watched my very old videos, I had this phrase, G-E-M, gems. Good enough metric, right? And these are kind of definitions of gems. The gym, one set is my gem, my good enough metric, or the 10% version. Whichever phrase you want to use, like it doesn't matter which one you use, but whatever resonates with you, remember that phrase. Reading, if you want to get back into reading, Read one page per day, for example. At least, this is the minimum requirement. One set at the gym, one page of your book. Studying, at least get 10 minutes done, right? And then allow yourself to close the book and put it away and do whatever else you want to do. But the thing is, when you have a little bit of momentum, right? When you've done at least a bit of it, then it allows you to have the momentum to carry on. 
Because in all likelihood, when you're at the gym, when you've done one set, you probably want to do a bit more. When you're reading a book, when you've read one page, you probably want to read a bit more. And when you're studying, when you've studied for 10 minutes and you're in the flow of studying and you've got like that, those brain juices going, you probably want to study a bit more, right? That's how it is. It's, it's more like you're tricking your brain into doing the work, right? You've kind of convinced yourself, you've kind of convinced that monkey side of you, you're like, you know, okay, look, we'll just do one set, okay? Just do one set, come on, come along with me, do one set. It's like you're tricking your brain, but even, even if you know how it works, it still works. The trick still works. You can still trick your brain, right? And that's a very, very key element of getting out of a rut. Tricking your brain into it, right? Because once it becomes a habit, it's generally easier. But when you're in a rut, that's when it's more difficult. Okay, that's what people, people don't really acknowledge this part, right? People, a lot of productivity, like gurus and people like that who talk about self-improvement on YouTube, they talk about this stuff as if it's easy. Because for them, it is easy. Like for me, if I've done it for a long time, it is easy for me. But I remember a time not so long ago where I would get into a rut and it would be difficult and I would be tempted to skip these things and it would feel the most difficult and so I had to take that 10% version of it, actually the, my, my gem, my good enough metric, to provide that momentum to do it and become a habit, you know, as I go along in life. So, with this, plan a time and stick to it, right? The worst thing you can say to yourself is later. I'll do it later. You know, I plan to go to the gym at five, but you know what? I'll do it later. And it becomes six and you say, oh, later on. Seven, eight, nine, before you know it, the gym's closed and you can't go to the gym anymore today. Never say later. This should be eliminated from your vocabulary. You should design and plan your day and stick to it, at least that. Remember that all you have to do is that one thing, that 10% version, one set, one page. And the, the other example was, what was it? 10 minutes of study. That's it. Just do it. It's so easy. You have no excuse, right? And so with that, with that planning, I'm going to talk about routine. It brings me nicely along to the routine part of this lecture. So, sorry, I'm a bit sniffly today, I'm a bit ill. There are things in our life that we cannot skip, right? I'll circle this here. School, work, a club, an appointment. Maybe we've like promised to go pick someone up at work or something like that. And so we kind of have to do these things. We can't let people down like that. But there are things that we could skip, right? We could have this mentality, oh, I could skip that. So, you know, going for a walk as your lunch break or whatever, studying in the day, eating at a certain time, going to the gym. These are things that we could tell ourselves, oh, I could skip that, I could do that later, right? But that is something that we need to kind of get rid of, right? It's, it's pretty much the same as saying that later phrase, I could do it later. It's fine if I don't do it today right? Could skip is another phrase that we need to eliminate from our vocabulary. We shouldn't say that anymore. Once we have planned a routine, just stick to it. Don't think about it, just do, right? And I have this phrase, don't F with the routine. And this is a phrase I've written down here because this phrase just resonates with me on another level for, for some reason. I don't know why. And I've had this on my wall over here for a very long time. I've had it on the wall of my rooms that I've lived in for years. I don't know how long, maybe three or four years. It just resonates with me so much because every time I try to kind of, you know, say, oh, it's okay. I can do it later. I could skip that. I could skip this. It all crumbles beneath me because I've made a plan at the point in time where I've been motivated and the human side of my brain has developed this thing for me to do, right? To, for me to like mindlessly just do and that be the most productive thing to do in the day and the most successful thing for me to do. And if I think in the moment, 
in the here and now, ah, I could skip it. Ah, I could do it later. It's always been something that just allows my life to just crumble beneath me and lead to a worse day than I could have had. Right? So this is a phrase for me that resonates with me a lot. Right? Once you have a routine, don't think, just do. I know normally it's better to think before you do, right? Our parents tell us that and things like that. Yes, I agree with that. But in this scenario, once you have a routine, once you've planned everything previously, when you've been in that state of mind where you're thinking, okay, what is the best thing for me to do? What is the most realistic thing for me to do? What is something that I'm able to do? You've planned this out over time and you've spent a good amount of time, a good few hours planning your routine. Then it comes to the point where you shouldn't think, you should just do, right? And I'm not saying that you should never change your routine. Of course you can, right? Little bits here and there. But once you have a plan, stick to it. And that's the only way you can see if it works or not. Stick to it for a week and see, okay, maybe I could gym at a different time because, you know, there's a, you know, a yoga class on that I could attend. Or maybe I could go for a walk at lunchtime because I feel like I want to get work done in the morning. I don't want to go for a morning walk. I want to go for a lunchtime walk, right? Little changes like that are fine, right? But do it in the first place. Don't think, just do. What I mean by that is in the moment. When you look at your routine, you think, okay, I've got a morning walk right now, but I'm feeling a bit lazy. I'm going to skip it. I'm going to do it later. Never do that. Always the thinking comes in when you're planning for the future. When it comes to the here and now, don't think. Allow yourself to kind of fall into the routine that your past self has set for you. Okay. So this phrase, don't think, just do comes in when we think about the here and now. When you talk about excuses that we can come up with, thinking about later or could skip. Those two phrases should not be allowed when you're thinking about what you're going to do right here, right now. Okay. So, give a man enough rope and he'll hang himself, right? This is a phrase I like a lot. And for me, this is what it means in this context. Give a man enough time to come to think and he'll come up with an excuse. Let me say that again. Give a man enough time to think and he'll come up with an excuse. Right. So, this is how I kind of come up with a routine, right? Google Calendar, very good resource. You literally, I came up with this in about two minutes, right? So let's look at this as an example thing, right? So in the morning, I could go for a morning walk. I could do some breakfast and reading afterwards, right? I could do some YouTube work. So for example, this might be someone who's like, you know, like me in a a certain way, but I do this differently, right? So right now, the time is 6.17, right? So this this isn't my schedule, right? It's something I made up very quickly and something that works, right? This, I could do this, right? Maybe basketball training at 10 o'clock for a couple hours. I can't leave enough time for me to, you know, go to the basketball court, drive back, have a shower, you know, do things like that. I kind of account for that time. I think in realistic terms, I give myself enough time to be able to do these things, right? And then lunch, you know, I might give myself a little break to have lunch and watch TV and whatever I want to do. And then let's say I have an exam to revise for. I can do some exam revision. I can go to the sauna and the gym, right? This might take me, you know, a couple hours of time. And then finally I can read my book and go to sleep, right? This took me two minutes to do. Very, very simple, right? You can think about this for a longer period of time. You can maybe think about it for maybe half an hour, but I would max out about half an hour, right? Because if you're spending more time planning what you're going to do than actually doing what you're going to do, then that can become a very bad negative spiral in terms of like, you know, over planning, overthinking things. Remember what I said before, do less thinking, more doing. Right, so once I have this, I don't think, I just do it, right? So when I get up, I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna go for a walk. I don't think like, oh, look at the weather outside, it's a bit cold today, it's a bit, mm, the sun's not out. No, I just put my shoes on and I go for a walk, right? When it comes six, six o'clock, I'm thinking, hmm, you know what, I'm not that hungry, I don't wanna read. No, 
I just have breakfast and I read because that's the time for me in the day to read. When it comes to seven o'clock, I'm not thinking, oh, you know what? I don't feel like well. I'm not in the mood to work right now. I just do the work. I just start and get into the mood by doing the work. I'll talk about that in a bit as well. And the same with the rest of these, right? Basketball training. I just put on my trainers and go. I'll get in the car, get my basketball in the car. I'll go to the basketball courts and I train basketball, right? With the exam revision, all these, these things, the same, right? Just do them. Just do it, right? And don't worry, you can change this later if you need to. As I mentioned before, that's the point I want to make as well. So when we come to this, the two last points, baby steps plus routine, right? Or whatever you want to call the baby steps, right? If you want to call it 10% rule, if you want to call it the gem, whatever you want to call it, this is such a powerful thing to do in combination, right? The 10% version plus the calendar. Very powerful duo. Now there's no excuse, right? Because you know exactly what you should be doing and you have an easy version of that thing that you should be doing, right? So now there's no excuse, right? You can literally just <laughs> do, you don't have to think anything anymore, right? So that, that animal side of your brain that kind of like comes up with an excuse and things like that, it's not given that excuse anymore. It's like, okay, you know what to do and you have an easy version of that to do. There's no excuse, right? What you're essentially doing is making it so much easier for your human side to be able to make that choice, right? And have that louder voice, right? Because the thing is, the human and the monkey side kind of collaborate with each other, right? If the monkey side is able to convince the human side, then they'll both decide to do the monkey side thing, right? What we're doing here is making it easier for the human side to convince the monkey side, right? So, and this is a really good phrase as well that I got from Alex Hormozzi, right? The best way to get into the mood is to just start. You know when people say, you might say this, I say this all the time, right? Oh, I'm not in the mood to do this. Right? I, I used to say this all the time, I should say. I don't say it anymore because I've, I've listened to this phrase and internalized it. When you're, you know, wanting to do the dishes, when you're wanting to get into work or like work on your business. I don't feel like it right now. I should do it later. I could skip this. The best way to get into the mood or to feel like it is to start doing that work, right? Like the best way to start revising for your maths test is to just start some questions. Just start right now, do something, right? Don't just sit there and tell yourself, oh, I'm not in the mood to revise for my maths test right now. I'm not in the mood to do my washing. Just start and you'll get into the mood. That's the best way, like people like to have this all these morning routines and like something they kind of ritualize to do before the task itself. But the best morning routine is to just start the thing. Like I get a bit passionate about this because it's just, it can become that productive excuse, right? Productive procrastination is an excuse, a justification as to why you're not doing the thing. Do the thing, right? Stop pretending that you need some kind of ritual beforehand, right? I'm not saying rituals are bad, but they can become a joke at times, right? Where you have like a, a five hour morning routine before you can start work in the day. Come on, that's ridiculous now, right? Like I'll allow, if you have like, you know, if you want to make a cup of tea, it takes one minute, fine, right? If you want that to be by your bedside table, or sorry, not bedside table, on your table when you're doing your work, fine, that's all right, right? But the idea is, if we want to pick one of these extremes, the extreme we should pick is just getting on with the work without any routine. Just do it, just start. That is the routine, starting, right? So that's the point there. Sorry if I got a bit passionate about that. So a quick recap about these points. Make the routine, don't think, just do, and then do the 10% version. These are the three points that I've kind of recapped so far. I know I kind of jumped around a little bit, so I wanted to 
recap the points I've made so far in this one slide. Okay, next, environment, step number four. Okay, very, very key, right? I want to talk quickly about something that's come to my mind just now, right? In fact, I'll talk about it in two slides time. Wait for it and remind me <laughs> as if you can. So take a look at this, right? This environment. I'm just gonna drink some water. So what do you think about this environment? A lot of video games, Instagram, junk food, phone games, Clash of Clans. Do people still play that? That's what I used to be addicted to. TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Netflix. Does this look like a productive environment? Does this look like an environment that engenders or kind of encourages productive behavior? The human side of our brain or does it encourage more of the monkey side of our brain? Right? Ask yourself that question. Now look at this slide. So, what about this one? Right? If we surround ourselves with these kind of things. Books, trainers, maybe if you're a YouTuber, so I'm kind of making this an analogy for me. A microphone, a camera, audible, on your home screen, on your phone, a calendar app, some notebooks. In fact, I'll show you what my home screen looks like. Oh wait, my phone's turned off. Okay, if I could show you my home screen, it would be completely blank, apart from very few apps like Audible, like the calendar app, right? And this is very close to what my room looks like. If I can move aside, actually, you can see the bookshelf behind me and some of these notebooks I have in the drawers beneath me. I'm not going to show you everything in my room. It's not a vlog here, but this is close to what I've environmentally, sorry, I've designed for my environment, right? And let me ask you this. Your computer is part of your environment as well. How many tabs do you have open right now? As well as this tab on YouTube, how many other tabs do you have open, right? If you're the average person, I bet you have like, you know, 33 tabs open. And that is something that claws at your attention and takes attention away from the things you're supposed to be doing, right? Close those distracting tabs. I've known people, look, I'll be honest, I've known myself in the past to have distracting tabs open for days and weeks at a time. So just so I can be like, okay, when I'm done with my work and go back to that tab. But the thing is, that tab is constantly in your face, right? You can see that, you know, you have a tab for YouTube or whatever it is, Instagram, whatever you want to do on your laptop, that tab's open. And so you're constantly thinking about it and it's taking your attention away from that. It's constantly feeding that kind of, the environment is feeding that monkey side of you, that impulse thought side of you, right? So close those distracting tabs. Clean up your room to look more like this, right? So with these things, you've got to eliminate these things, right? Put your video game console away. Put it in the attic, in a box, so that you can't get to it. And it's so hard to do that you just don't do it. Delete Instagram with your phone, right? Don't have junk food lying around. Don't have like Oreos and crisps in your cupboard, in your kitchen. Don't have TikTok on your phone. <laughs> unsubscribe from Netflix. How does it work? You paid like a membership? Is it on your phone? I've never had Netflix, so I don't really know. But unsubscribe from it. Like stop those payments going through so you don't have it. You don't have access to it. Delete Clash of Clans. Delete YouTube if it's that addictive, right? All these things you can just get rid of in your life. So you want to build an environment that looks a bit more like this. The things that you want to, it might not be a microphone necessarily. It might not be a camera necessarily, but it might be if you're an artist, it might be pencils, paintbrushes, paper, you know, like molding clay or whatever, right? Having those resources around you so that you can do the thing that is your thing that you do is very, very helpful for your brain, right? For the monkey and the human side of your brain to collaborate and choose the better thing to do, right? 
So, how distracting is your phone? Right, I literally just talked about that. How distracting is my phone? It's off. I don't know if you can see that. You can see the laptop reflecting there. But it's off, right? You can turn it off. Right, that's, these, there's a, several options here, right? Off, there's airplane mode. There is There are certain like apps you, you can download to like uh, block you know, other apps. So you can block Instagram, you can block YouTube at certain times of day, or you can like make it, or there's certain apps that make you wait to access it. So I've got an app on my phone called One Sec, and it makes you wait a couple of seconds before you access YouTube, for example. Very good app, I re re really recommend it by the way. Not a sponsor, just some, some app that I like, right? So all these different kind of options allow you to have a less distracting phone, to favor that human side of your brain that wants to do the productive thing, that wants to work hard, that wants to plan for the future, right? All these things are part of your environment and they change the way that you behave so that you can live a better life, a more successful life, right? So my phone, there's no distractions, right? To talk further about that, there's, okay, turning it off, airplane mode, you know, having plugins, things like that. There's a settings in your phone. So in my settings, in my phone, all the apps have the notifications turned off, right? Everything, right? So if I want to know if someone's texted me, I've got to go into the texting app. I've got to go into the WhatsApp app to check that. And for me, it's never been a problem. Never, ever, ever, maybe on like one or two occasions in the entire year, is it like an like a problem that someone brings up? You know, oh, I needed you at that point, right? I, I texted you and you didn't reply because obviously my phone is on, it's either turned off, airplane mode, all the settings are, no, no notifications, right? But the ROI for me, the return on investment for me is insane. Right? The amount of productive hours in the day that I have when I have no distraction. Right? My phone isn't even on. So even if I were to, you know, somehow get distracted and pick up my phone, I'll be like, oh, it's turned off. And I'll put it back down again. Right? Even better, I can put it in like a drawer. I can put it in the, the other room. I can put it in the kitchen. So when I search for my phone, I'll be like, oh, it's in the kitchen because I want to be productive today. I'll leave it there. Right? Because I'm like, oh, okay, I, I understand what I've planned before, so I'm just, I'm just going to accept that. Do less thinking, more doing. Right? So moving on from this one. Do you have a quiet room? Right? And what can you do about that? Can you soundproof your room? Can you get up at an earlier time, 5 a.m. for example, so that you can have a quiet room? without people, you know, maybe neighbors or family members being loud and things like that. And don't get me wrong, I don't have the quietest house, right? In terms of those kind of factors, but this is why I wake up early, to get things done in the day, to have a quieter environment. Right now it's, it's summer in the UK. So even if you get up early, the sun's up in the sky. We have very long days right now, right? So that's good for me, but even in the winter, when the sun get, doesn't get up until, you know, 8 a.m. Right, right now it's 6.30. It'd, it'd still be dark if it was winter right now in the UK. Right? But you can do things about that. You know, soundproofing might seem extra, but waking up early? That's doable. You can do that. Right? And, you know, do things like closing your curtains or closing your windows or having earphones in. Or having headphones, noise cancelling headphones. I've never been a fan of headphones, so I just like doing things that help me to avoid that, like getting up early, like working in a different environment. Like, so for example, if you absolutely cannot get any time of day in your room quiet, then go to the library, go to another environment, find a way for it to work for you, right? So moving on, step number five, dopamine control, right? What does this mean? Basically, it means to eliminate your need for constant stimulation. When we're in that kind of rut, where we've let our, our monkey take the crown 
and take control of our lives, it's very easy to become addicted to certain things. Right? So we might be on our phone, I'm sorry to use this prop so much, but we might use to, you know, scroll all day for like three hours on the toilet. Or maybe, you know, get up and the first thing we see is our phone screen, we scroll through Instagram, right? And you know, things like, you know, getting addicted to perhaps other habits that are more dangerous, right? Like, you know, drugs, smoking, things like this. Even, you know, the hub, right? I don't know if I can try to avoid words that might get me shadow banned on YouTube, but this kind of stuff, right? So to avoid that, to do the things that are less stimulating, I recommend these activities. A walk in nature, without your phone, by the way, right? You don't need your phone. You don't need to take pictures, right? Bring your keys and that's it, right? To have the ability to be able to do something like this will help you to be satisfied with being with yourself and not having to pick up a phone, not having to, you know, watch videos all day, having to be stimulated all the time, right? Eating a meal without watching something, right? And you're thinking right now, oh my goodness, without watching something? Are you crazy? But just try it one day, right? I often do this from time to time. I will eat a meal while just not doing anything. I'll just sit down at the table downstairs. If someone wants to talk to me, they can talk to me. And I'll just have time to just be with family and just do nothing. If Most likely, people don't talk, right? So I'm just sitting there, just kind of being with my mother, being with my dad, right? Being with my dog, even, right? Eating my meal. And even eating a meal while doing work. So most times, I don't have a bowl with me today, but I'll usually wake up and I might be a bit hungry. I'll have a bowl of food while I'm making the presentation before I record, right? So maybe I'll be planning some other things that I'm kind of doing in the day and working while I'm eating a meal. So this attachment we have to watching something while eating a meal is a very powerful attachment, right? But it can be detached. You can just eat a meal in peace. You can, you can eat a meal while doing work. You've done it before, right? to try and make it a habit. Turning your phone off. I've talked enough about that, so I'll skip right past this one. Just kind of being okay with being with yourself, right? Step number six is your reason, right? This is like your reason why you do something, right? For some reason, okay, look at this, right? I wake up early because, because dot, 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 because I want to get this work done. I need this time in the day to kind of feel better in my body. It just feels better for me to wake up early and I want to get work done. Right? It's the prime time in my day for, for work, for recording videos, things like that. I love it. It's great. As an example, I go to the gym because dot, dot, dot. And this doesn't have to be necessarily sounding good, right? You might be tempted to say, I go to the gym because I want to be stronger. I want to be a better athlete. I want to, you know, that kind of stuff. You can say, I'll, I go to the gym because I want to look good, because I want to get girls, right? That might not seem like the correct thing to say, but be honest with yourself, all right? If you want to attract ladies, fine, right? Some people might frown upon you. Oh, you're, you're going to the gym for the wrong reason. Who cares? You don't have to tell them. Just keep it to yourself, right? If they're so annoyed at it, keep it to yourself. It's fine, right? I'll be honest. That's part of the reason I go to the gym. I want to look more attractive. I want to get... <laughs> if that's one way I can get girls, sure, great. I love it. I'm not going to deny that, right? Some people want to kind of like seem like the reason that they're doing something is like pure and righteous be realistic with this, right? You don't have to tell anyone about this kind of stuff, right? It's for you. If you have a reason that's powerful enough, it needs to be realistic. It needs to be honest, authentic. So have that reason. If, if that makes you go to the gym, if you need to tell yourself, I need to go to the gym because you know what? 
it's important to me to be attractive so I can find a girl that can maybe in the future can be my wife, right? And I want to be attractive to that person. So that's why I want to go to the gym. If that's your reason, then go for it. You shouldn't mind what other people say about that or what other people think about that. I work hard on this project because dot, dot, dot. I work hard on YouTube because I genuinely want to help other people and as many people as I can. It's, it's my one goal in life is to help others through my skill of teaching, right? I have a skill, I have an innate skill of teaching. That's what I believe, right? And I want to give that gift to as many people as possible, which is why I work so hard on this project, which is why I work so hard on YouTube. Right? I just have this skill that I, I've developed over time. Maybe I have a natural inclination towards it. But either way, I have the skill. and I, I love giving that to other people. I've experienced, I have a decade or more of experience of teaching people. And I, I've loved it. And I want to do it more. That's why I work on this stuff so hard. Even though I'm not earning anything from it. Even though I'm just I'm doing it for free. Right? I'm, I'm building a community for free. All this kind of stuff is free. Right? I just want to teach. Right? So, that's the reason why. As you as you can probably tell by the reasons that I give for these things, I really care about the stuff I do. And I really think about the reason I do it. And that's what helps me come up with the reason why I kind of like maybe the night before or maybe in general in the day I write things down to tell me to tell myself why I'm doing these things right why am I doing this right I kind of write down I kind of think this through kind of like as if I'm talking to someone else who's asking me why are you doing this why are you going to the gym why are you waking up early why are you working so hard on YouTube right and to be able to explain myself is good for me and for them as well, right? But more importantly, for me. So next step, incorporating the monkey, right? This is kind of like acknowledging the fact, it's kind of the same as step one, but plus, like the plus level, right? Incorporating the monkey. You see, our desires can be used for good. Our natural animalistic desires can be used for good. Let me tell you how, right? A natural desire can be transformed into a good habit, right? Here's how. Excuse me. We have a desire for movement and play, right? And that can be transferred into doing things like going to the gym and playing sports, right? There's some part of us when we play sports and go to the gym that is satisfied by that, that desire for movement and play, when I play basketball, when I fight jiu-jitsu, when I go to the gym and lift weights heavier and heavier each time, it's this kind of like stimulating thing for me to do. And that's my monkey side of my brain, right? So it's, as I said, I've, as I kept saying throughout this presentation, it's a collaboration between the monkey side and the human side of your brain that allows you to achieve the best success in life, right? Similarly, your desire for resources and status allows you to build the habit that gets you money and build your career, right? These things are satisfied, right? The human and the monkey side collaborating, right? Incorporating the monkey. Do you see what this is? Our desire for tasty food can get us into the habit of cooking and seeking better health in our nutrition, right? Does this kind of make sense here? Our desire for reproduction and companionship can lead us towards that good habit of talking to women, right? Approaching people and talking to strangers, even though it's a scary thing to do, right? Even though, you know, that monkey side might be too, have too much fear, have too much comfort. It's the marriage between the human side and the monkey side because the monkey really does desire reproduction. It really does desire companionship. But it needs that human side of the brain to be like, go on then, let's talk to those women, even though we're scared about it, right? Step number eight, the penultimate, penultimate, second from last. 
And I know you guys might be thinking, how boring, I'm going to skip this part because it's talking about mental health and it's going to be boring. But this is one of the most important steps, okay? You need to take care of this because, look, mental health is the level zero of everything else. I believe this fundamentally ever since I learned about it. I used to think in this way. I used to think, oh, mental health is just BS. You don't need to care about it. It's just, you just do the things you want to do. But it's such an important thing. Every, ever since I learned about it, I was like, oh, right. So if I don't feel good in my brain, I'll, I won't be motivated to do anything. Right, that makes sense to me. Right, that's what it is, essentially. Right? So, basic things like sleep, diet, exercise, social life, purpose in life, right? So for me, the big ones are probably social life and purpose, right? What am I doing in life, right? I can't, I'm not one of those people that can work like a dead-end job, like at a law firm that's boring but pays big bucks, right? If I don't have that sense of purpose, I die inside, it's literally the worst thing for me. And although so many people in my life have told me just to, oh, just go get an MBA, just go do that boring business job and just, you'll be set for life, right? You do, it doesn't matter what you do for work. You don't need to enjoy work. That for me is a death sentence, right? Working nine to five, like my whole life, I could never do that. And so I'd rather be broke and doing the things that I love doing, like teaching and doing things like this, but that's a message that's hard to, for people to understand sometimes. Especially parents and things like that. Family members. Right? Have you got a job yet? Or are you still doing YouTube? Is it is it earning money yet? Like, not yet, but it will do one day. It's kind of hard to communicate that. And social life for me as well, right? If I don't talk to someone in a couple of days, then I start to feel it, right? Almost surprisingly so, right? I don't see it coming, but I'm thinking, why do I feel so weird today? Or I haven't, the last time I talked to a stranger, or the last time I talked to someone outside my house was on, you know, last Friday, five days ago. That's why I feel so funky today, right? That's a big one for me, right? Yeah, for me, social, big one. And purpose, if I had to name a second one. When mental health suffers, the crown will go to the monkey you will do the less effortful things because you don't have as much energy anymore. Mental energy or physical energy, you don't have as much as if either one, right? So the crown will go to the monkey. You will do those monkey-like behaviors, right? And you'll go back to the start and you'll have to get out of that rut like I talked to you about at the start of this video. And the last part is those bad habits, right? How do we do or deal with those bad habits once we've gotten back into them and how do we get out of that cycle? So this can include things like, you know, drugs, smoking, for example, here, the hub, video games, alcohol, addiction to social media, addiction to TV shows, things like this. So how do we get out of that cycle? Again, the 10% version rule still applies. But of course, we're working in the opposite direction. We're trying to get rid of these habits. Right. So 10 cigarettes every day can turn into one cigarette every day. That's the 10% version. Right. The hub every day, I think you know what I'm talking about here, you can do it once a week. Right. And that's a big improvement. Don't deny yourself that improvement. Right. That's something to do. Don't try to quit cold turkey because every time you kind of you spring back. Right? It never works really sustainably. Like Most times people try to quit cold turkey, it fails. Right? If you try to quit smoking cold turkey, you literally get withdrawal symptoms. Right? It's, it's literally bad for you. Not, let alone the fact that it's mentally hard. Right? If you go on Instagram every day, try and limit yourself to once a week. Right, the way I would do this is I would use the browser version on your computer. Instead of having it on your phone, delete it off your phone. You can still access it. You can still have your account. Use it on your computer. It's a lot less addictive. Trust me. It, it really is. And if you're watching TV shows for five hours a day, 
Reduce it to 30 minutes, right? At least do these things, these 10% versions of these bad habits that you're doing. So that's a lot of info. I know I've talked about a lot. I just didn't want to leave anything on the table. But what do you do with this? Whatever sticks the most with you, carry that information forward. If you wrote notes for this video, circle the parts that are most standing out to you. Circle the parts that you might write down and put on your wall. The stuff that means a lot to you. Because what I've included is everything. Right, everything that wants, everything that could possibly help you. I don't want to leave anything on the table here. Everything that could possibly help you, I want to give it to you, just all of it. Right? So write down the stuff that sticks the most. Right? Whatever, like if I said one phrase and you're like, oh my goodness, that is mind blowing, that's crazy, it's amazing, write that down. Stick that into your brain. Stick that on your wall. Right? I've got a list of uh quotes on my wall and things that remind me to do the the things in my life right and that's been gathered over the course of you know years of time watching videos just like this one right and just kind of having my mind blown by other people that make videos just like this so now the Q&A section right some good questions here but I want to tell you how to submit your questions right so I talked about this before very briefly I have a community page, which is free for a limited time, and it will be free for life if you get it right now, right? So just to explain that very clearly, you will lock in that price, all right? You will pay $0 a month, right, for the rest of your life. Nothing, right? If you get it right now, because here's why you should get it right now, because it will go up to 129 a month. So go check it right now. Go click on that link, the first one in the description, and the pinned comment below. Go check it out. That's where you can submit your questions to me that I will answer in these videos on YouTube. All right? So yes, first link in the description and the pinned comment below. So you get to a page like this and you click join group and then it will, it will be self-explanatory from there. And in there, there is bonus content, right? So I've got a, a carnival diet full guide. There'll be more coming soon. So I've just created this very recently. I'm working on this one right now, the Gym 101, and there'll be more about mental health, about socializing, about talking to girls, everything that I can think of that will bring value to my core audience of, of members that really, really care about building this community and bringing something to, to the table. And my kind of like, you know, I want this to be my base of fans, right? So I want to give everything that I can in this community and leave nothing on the table. So if you've enjoyed this video so far, then click through to there for some really in-depth, like really, 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 like it's very implementory, like very, like you can follow the steps. I'll give you worksheets and, you know, you know, resources and links and things like that. It's really, really detailed. I really love the way that I can, I'm able to teach on these, on a platform like this. It's really good. I love it so much. And I think it's really good for you to join. If you've enjoyed this so far, you will love this community page, right? So I'll talk more about that later on in the video. But first, some questions, Q and A. First one here, I keep staying in bed for ages after my alarm goes off. I get stuck in this excuse mindset because there's nothing that I have to do in the day. So there's no point in waking up. How do I stop doing this? Okay, this is, I'm not gonna lie, very relatable for me. Like even recently sometimes, right? Because the job that I do is YouTube and the side job that I do is I tutor, I teach, right? So my hours aren't regular. So I, I don't have to wake up every day. I don't have to wake up at 5 a.m. every day and work on YouTube and things like that. There are times where I'm staring at the ceiling and I'm like, <sighs> you know, I just could go back to sleep right now, right? But how do I stop doing that? Well, there are different things, right? Having a good reason why is very important for this. So on those days where I stare up at the ceiling, I'm thinking, why do I wake up right now? And I think about the exciting things I wanna do in the day. The exciting thing that I wanna do right now, record a video. So when I woke up at 4.30 this morning, I was like, oh, 
I want to record that video today about the monkey brain. Cool, awesome, let's do that. I get excited about it, right? So maybe plan something that you're excited about doing in the morning. Plan something that you really motivates you to wake up, right? Remember why you're doing that. And if you forget why, then journal about it. Write down something, like spend time just thinking about it. Even if it's like an hour of your day, write it down. Like, okay, here's why I wake up this morning, right? Here's why I wake up at 5 a.m. You can title it that. You can say, okay, I really want to work on that YouTube thing. I love doing it. I love speaking. And I remember the moments when I'm recording videos, I enjoy them so much. So talk about the way that you feel, the way that everything good about waking up, do those things. And do whatever helps you as well. Like if you want to wake up and it's kind of cold and you'd like having a nice hot shower in the morning, do that if it helps you out, right? If it helps you get out of bed thinking that, okay, I can have a hot shower. I can make that hot cup of tea. I can put on my nice warm jumper and my jacket. I can turn the heater on, right? I can, if you've got a fireplace, even better. I can put the fireplace on, right? I get to play with my dog. I get to do whatever, right? Make it easier for you to do in the day, right? So have your reason why and make it easier for you, right? To do that thing. Another thing I do from time to time is I, I call up a friend of mine and I say, look, if I don't get up tomorrow, I'll give you a hundred pounds, right? <laughs> Just as a, like a friendly thing to kind of like hold me accountable. If I don't send you a picture of me awake at this time, I will give you a hundred pounds, like a little bet, right? There's a very big consequence to that. It's kind of, it's a fun thing you can do to make it fun to do the productive thing, right? Obviously there's like a real consequence to that. So you know, you want to do it even more so, right? And you've told someone about it as well. Telling people is often a good motivator as well. I'm going to do this. Even without the money, they'll be like, oh, did you do that thing that you said, said you'd do? It's kind of like the shame is enough of a punishment of not doing that thing, right? So there's various ways you can go about this. Either one of these things, right? You can use friends or like an appointment that you need to do in the morning, right? If you have any appointments that you could do, then put them in the morning, right? If you have something like maybe if you want to get up at five, put an appointment at 5.30 or six of something that you should, you have to do, right? So have a good reason why. Make it easy for yourself. Get friends involved, accountability partners, and set appointments in the day that make you have to wake up, right? Because sometimes it's an option for us. Like for me, it's an option for me. I don't do anything that requires me to wake up that early, 4.30, 5 o'clock. Nothing requires me to wake up that early. It's just that I want to do it. And I have a good enough reason why I make it easy for myself. I have friends that can help me when I need them. I can set appointments. And that's basically what I do. What I would do if I were you and kind of get into this rut of not waking up on time. Because I've definitely been in the past. I'm not going to say I'm perfect. I've never done this before. I've definitely been in the past. Definitely. Next question. This is a bit embarrassing to say, but I'm on the hub every day, and I've tried to quit before, but I eventually get back into it. It's really bad. It's been most of my life. How do I get out? Okay, with this one, I'm going to say something a bit controversial, right? I still think cold turkey is a bad idea, right? And you're saying, what, so you're going to recommend this guy still watch the stuff on the hub? Yes. <laughs> if you watch it every day, then go to once a week. As I, I, I think I literally just talked about that on that slide, right? Go to once a week. Once a week is a huge improvement and you'll find... Like literally, I've made a video about this in the past, right? And I talked about the fact that you can, if you can go to once a week, then you can do anything else in life, right? Because it's such a big point, right? At once a week, you no longer feel like you have an addiction. You no longer feel like you have to do it anymore. If you can get to once a week, which feels easy, right? You can think in your mind like, oh, one week, 
that's easy, right? A month seems hard, right? But a week, that's, that's, I could do that, right? Most people in life, when you talk to them, even if they're like really addicted to something, if you, if you say, oh, could you do it once a week? They say, oh, yeah, I could do that. That sounds pretty easy, actually, right? So if you can commit to once a week, happy days. Honestly, like genuinely, <laughs> if you carry, even if you carried on for one, once a week for the rest of your life, it'd be so much better, so much better for you, right? But obviously the idea from there is to progress it further, right? You could progress it to once a month, right? But the, the idea is every time you fall back into that rut, right? We don't want to fall back into the rut, but it happens sometimes. Bad things externally happen, like, you know, you know, maybe you get a divorce or maybe something really bad, someone dies or like something bad happens and you, you go back into this rut of that bad habit that you're doing. This could be anything, right? Once a week is a very good place to be, right? I know this is a controversial recommendation, but if you can do something once a week, it is really a huge progress, number one. And secondly, it's... It's a place at which you feel that you're no longer addicted to this thing. Genuinely, right? And this is like something I found in my life to be the golden ratio, right? Between feeling like you're addicted and feeling like it's like way too hard to accomplish. Once a week is like the best thing that I've ever come across, right? It's a secret I've discovered, okay? Like, I don't know why, but once a week, it just works. With me, with anyone who, who I've ever recommended this to, it just works. If you can do something once a week, then it just, it just becomes something that is great. If it's a bad habit, it no longer controls your life. If you can stick to it. Like, literally mark your calendar. Every Saturday, I'm going to do that thing. Right? And just stick to it right? Even if it takes you like, you know, if you stick to once a week for three, four months, that's great, right? And then you can go to once a month. And then you can go to like, you know, once every two months or whatever, right? However long it takes, you want it to last longer. You don't want to go too fast and then end up rebounding back to once every day. Go for once a week. Okay, it's just it's a magical point, right, that I've discovered. I don't know why it works. It just works once a week. Trust me with that. Try it out and let me know how it goes. So that's that's my recommendation there. Also, on that video I made a while ago, there's a progression you can make, right, with the hub and things like that. Okay, let me just talk in explicit terms here. You can watch, like, very extreme stuff, right, and worried about the words I'm going to say here because of YouTube and that they're censoring. But you can watch very extreme versions of this thing. And you can watch stuff that is, you know, solo, right? Uh, stuff that is less extreme. I'm trying to pick the right words here to use. I think you know what I mean, right? If you're into this kind of stuff, you can regress it over time, right? You know what I mean by solo. You know what I mean by, you know, Maybe even like swimsuit models or something like that. Like no nudity, right? Regress it down that far. Maybe even pictures instead of video, right? There's a way to regress this down as well as doing it once a week. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. And that should help you out a lot, right? I've been here before as well. Just to make you feel a bit better, I've totally been here. 100%, all right? I think most men have as well. They might not want to admit it, but they have been, right? But it's, you can get out. I know it feels like you can't get out. You definitely can. I felt that way in the past and I got out and it's, it's completely fine. So best of luck to you. That's my advice for you. And genuinely, it will work. I fully believe that. For you and for me, best wishes and good luck with that. Okay, next one. <clears throat> I've always wanted to get into reading, but I always get distracted and do something that's much more monkey brain, like video games or scrolling on my phone. 
How do I get into habits like that? I feel so dumb right now that I can't even read a book. It feels like it's impossible. Okay. Like I said before, this feeling, it feels like it's impossible. That's completely normal. When you're in a rut, and rut can last for years, right? I didn't read books for like a decade of my life. And when I got back into reading books, it did feel impossible. I was thinking like, what? how can I not read a book anymore? I used to read books all day when I was a kid, but now I can't. I'm older, I'm wiser, I'm more intelligent. I'm supposed to be able to read books. So totally relatable, by the way. I totally relate to this. You've just got to get back into it, right? Using that 10% method, right? It feels impossible, but use that 10% method. Or whichever whichever phrase or iteration you could you could you resonate it with more. The 10% version. The good enough metric. The baby step. Whichever whichever phrase you want to use. Okay, for me, 10% version. Right? Read that one page a day. And then get into it. Right? Just buy a book that you like reading. Read what you enjoy. Right? Pick something that maybe you've read in the past and you know that you enjoyed that book. Right? It might not be the most productive thing to do because you feel like, oh, I've read it in the past, so it's not productive. Just do it. If you want to get back into reading and you know for sure that you'll enjoy the book, then read it again. Right? Or read something that perhaps is much easier to read for you. So maybe if you're interested in, I don't know, like football, read about football. If you're interested in, I don't know, some particular video game and there's a book about a video game, read that book. If there's a book about YouTube, read that book if you enjoy YouTube stuff, right? So do the stuff that you enjoy, read the stuff that you enjoy and do the 10% version and you'll get back into it. Trust me, right? And also do the things that get you away from your phone, right? So put your video game console away in your attic or something like that, or like do something that allows you to be less addicted to it. And scrolling your phone, delete Instagram, delete TikTok, delete YouTube, turn your phone off, go on airplane mode, download an app called, (laughs) such as the ones called OneSec, right? To alleviate the addiction you have to certain apps on your phone, right? Do things like that slowly over time And you will be able to get into a space where you are able to read very easily, right? It feels impossible right now, but you will get into a place where it's easy for you. I know that seems unrealistic. Right now, it's like, oh, I can't imagine enjoying reading, right? But imagine the greats in life. They started at some place, right? I can imagine, like, I had this thought the other day of all the black belts in my jiu-jitsu gym. And I thought, huh, they were once white belts, right? That It kind of blows my mind to think that because in my mind, it's like they're black belt now. And I've never seen them as a, you know, white, blue, purple, brown, any belt, right? But they must have been a white belt at some point. They have to have been. That's like the, the process that they have to go through, Right? But in my mind, they just kind of popped up into existence as a black belt, but that's not how it is. Kobe Bryant had to start basketball somewhere. Michael Phelps had to learn swimming somewhere at some point in life. Right? They didn't just like pop out of the womb as a baby, just naturally able to, you know, win gold medals. No. They had to do these things, right? Mo Farah had to learn to run. Who else can I talk about here? Djokovic had to learn to play tennis, right? It was hard for them at some point. It did feel impossible, but they just did it. They did the 10% version and more and more and more until they got to that place where it's easy for them now. It's easy to play tennis for Djokovic. It's easy to play basketball for Kobe. It's easy to swim for Michael Phelps, right? So although it seems impossible now, remember that principle. The black belt used to be a white belt. Okay? 
And the person that likes reading at some point found it difficult. So don't worry about that. Have that mentality. Do the 10% version and regress your negative habits as well. Like video games, like scrolling on your phone, doing things like that. And you will be fine. Believe me. Okay. So best wishes with that. Good luck and let me know how it goes. Cool. All right, that's the end of the questions. Thank you very much for submitting those. I promise you some details, right, about the community page. So, as I said before, free for a limited time, and it's going to go up in price, so go check it now. More info, what is in it? What is it What is it exactly? Right? It's an exclusive community page with live calls, a high-value network, one-to-one coaching, and online courses. Okay? So, you can expect that and more when you get into that in the link below, right? So the video in the about page includes all the details that you might need to kind of know about navigating the page and all the extras like that. So don't worry about that. And of course there is bonus content like the carnival dietful guide, the gym guide, and I'll include things like this as well. This topic might come under things like, you know, productivity 101, right? So things like this. So if you, if you enjoyed this, then you'll enjoy that a lot as well. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. And at the end of this video, I'll say something that we say at the end of every video, and that is knowledge is power and the power is yours. I hope to see you in that community page very soon. And so if you'd like to join, click that link below, the first link in the description and the pinned comment below. So take care of yourselves. I think that's everything. Yeah, take care. Peace. Very nice.